Hey, what's going on guys over here and welcome back to my F1 2017 career mode. We're back with part number 23 today for the Bahrain Grand Prix for season two. If you did miss the last episode uploaded yesterday at the Chinese Grand Prix, be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. But as per usual, checking through the engine components. And as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, we've got this thing going where it's actually looking very, very good for reliability wise that we're stretching the first two columns and kind of using those a lot more fluidly than we did last season. Last season, it was very much a case of I would stick in one entire column as the practice engine basically and then the other one would be the qualifying and race whereas now I'm finding actually the tactic that's working for now and that appears to be the one the way to go is kind of using both very uh, very interchangeably to try and tactically both kind of have the same wear so there's no big deficit in practice either you can see as we go through the practice programs no kind of dramas this time like we had at China with a little spin in the final corner and uh, you know since there's no deficit on the engine parts yet we've had no issues with the practice programs, whereas of course a lot of times last season there were instances where my engine was so poor that I just couldn't even do the practice programs. I couldn't get the delta time for the tyre wear test or the fuel saving. Of course here at Bahrain you can see a bit of an odd uh, kind of weekend obviously with two of the practice sessions being under daylight versus the night time that we do qualifying and the racing. We had a bit of a funny a little battle here with the Sauber whilst I was trying to do my race strategy but in the end uh, I tried to get the maximum amount of points we could and you can see we're bubbling away quite nicely to about 800 points so by the end of the episode I'm not too sure what the maths would be from qualifying in the race but I'm hoping that we'll be able to just about purchase uh, our first kind of major upgrade uh, of course the only upgrade we've done so far is one durability one we haven't actually done a performance part the next one will be the engine powertrain upgrade so hopefully by the end of this episode we can actually do that but you can see now swapping in column number two ahead of qualifying um, to try and get the least wear out of the two but as I just said by the end of this episode uh, column two will probably be worn out just as much as column one so we'll basically be back to square one uh, the comparison between those two columns so we're diving straight into q1 and actually this is the end of our first flying lappy we come across the line it's only p16 for now so that wouldn't even be good enough to get out of q1 so we need to keep on going and like we've done before at china we actually continue on just for a second lap on the same tires and actually despite the lock up there into turn one which looked pretty bad on the top right you can see it actually gained us some time in terms of the delta time so i definitely must have been very very cool cautious into the break, uh, break, break zone the first time round on that first line lap so despite the lockup still getting time and gain quite a bit of time around the lap uh, to get us up into P14 then eventually uh, at the end of the session it actually goes down to P15 you can see just about made it into Q2 so very very close stuff whereas Nico very comfortable in P7 so it looks like I have my work cut out this afternoon really to actually maybe match my teammate for the first time really uh, this season in the Renault just just got ahead of Kevin Magnussen he was very very, very close actually that was a, a little bit too close for my liking so in q2 trying our the best we can through the first few corners but generally not feeling too confident because remember this was also the first place last time out in season one i believe that we got uh, that we didn't make it to the top 10 in the Toro rosso i think we made it to the top 10 in the Toro rosso for the first two rounds and then here in uh, round three we didn't do that and at the moment the way it's going it's going to look very very close we're at the moment in p9 but we're in our second flying lap attempt in q2 having to use a second set of fresh super soft so even though even if we do make it into q3 i I will only have worn super softs to hand basically uh, for our runs I think I believe I've counted them correctly so at the moment you can see on the top left now we've been uh, pushed down to P12 thank you Fiat sending a good lap time there Stroll we're just ahead of him as we come across the line you can see going negative and only just improving by uh, literally a handful of a uh, hundred basically so not even worthwhile then we only come home in p12 so the first time this season we have been knocked out in q2 in qualifying nico has made it just about look how close that is between uh nico daniel and then myself there uh in q2 very very close stuff very very annoying actually uh that i'm unable to make that cut so yeah just gonna have to suck it up really and kind of take it on the chin and i think that's pretty much where we qualified in season one actually so uh, i don't know what it is on this year's game definitely i would say bahrain a bit of a bogey circuit for me um for sure for sure so we have to see what we do in the race but it wasn't a fantastic race for us last time in season one so uh, we'll just see how it goes but let's hand you over to Crofty and Anthony Davidson to talk you through the rest of the grid as obviously I didn't take part in Q3 so I don't actually know what the grid's going to be like tell me Ant obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between the races you've been both a test driver and a race driver what differences are there in the way you approach those roles Interesting question, Crofty. They're two very different mindsets. I mean, when I tested for BAR, we had full in-season testing where, per driver, you'd cover up to 15,000 kilometers per season. 
and in that role it was more about working for the team, trying to help them improve the car and drive as systematically as you could, so that that data could be analysed in the most consistent way. When you're lining up on the grid for a race, however, your frame of mind's all about what you can get out of the situation on that day, and the car's the tool to help you achieve what you want. You still want to focus on setup, of course, but it's more about the here and now, getting yourself as far up the field as possible, and less about development work for the future. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen, and Ricardo, Massa, Perez, Hülkenberg, and Roman Grosjean, Kvyat, and a Renault, Lance Stroll, and Sainz, Ocon, Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, and Stoffel van Dorn, Verlein, and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. So from the grid sequence there, you saw Nico got P9. So in the end of it, actually, didn't matter too much. Only a couple positions there. One row difference between our two starting positions. So as we look ahead to the race strategy, thinking back to season one where we got it a little bit wrong. I, di I think I ended up stretching out two sets of super softs and using the soft tyres and avoiding the mediums. I think it was, if I remember correctly. Um, so basically this time round, not going to make that mistake this time. Hopefully going to go with the kind of more conventional strategy. We're actually going to swap it round though from what my engineer wants me to do and basically start on the slowest compound of tyre, the medium tyre, go basically softer and softer as we go on through the race basically. So as we chuck out the fuel and the car gets lighter, we'll be on the faster tyre and so hopefully we'll be you know able to catch cars um, if, if that's the scenario basically. That will probably be the case because I don't expect us to do uh, major, major things in this first stint. But you can see I'm putting in a lot more fuel than uh, initially was put in. It was going to be under fueling my car but I feel like we're going to need a lot of rich mix potential especially to use those softer tyres towards the end of the race. So that's the game plan for today. So let's get into this without further ado as we go to five red lights for the Bahrain Grand Prix, round number three of season two. Five red lights are out and we're underway here. Initially, it's a poor getaway for us, but then third gear, the car starts to bite into the road and we get a really good launch to get past Danny Kofiat maybe into turn one. We're going to see and suss out where we can go down the inside of two cars there, including, I think, Danny Ricciardo that it was in the Red Bull car as my former teammate signs uh, kind of bounces over the curbing into turn one. He's able to overtake me, so He's up into P9. We're in P10. So it's been a decent start for us and a horrible one for Dan Ricciardo, who I think was in P7 on the grid. So really poor getaway for the Australians. We now have a look at Sainz. He's had a really poor exit as we go in towards the end of Sector 1, banging our uh, side pods a little bit there, nearly getting crossed up with our front left tyre to his front right as we try and hang it around the outside. He's going to give us the room. He's been put off a little bit. We're off the circuit a tad on the curbing there, but down the inside then to the hairpin. And hopefully, can we get this on the exit? No, doesn't look like it. We may have to tuck in, yes we do, so unable to get that move into turn one, so for now the Torossa has it, but there you can see up ahead, Nico Hulkenberg is in P9 there, I think that is, so or P8 or P I should say, so it's been a pretty okay start for him I guess, and uh, leading the way is still Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton, so the two Mercedes cars keeping their 1-2 from the grid, but as we move on now to the next lap, I think this will be actually, it's the Haas actually making moves on the Red Bull car of Ricardo. this is Grosjean going for a move, we right on board with him now, he's going to go for the move down the inside. Remember, no DRS here, so the Haas going very well on a straight line compared to the Red Bull down the inside. They go side by side. It's going to tighten up for Ricardo, and he actually cuts the corner majorly there in the second turn, so Grosjean is able to get a much better run, and he's going to make the move on the Red Bull, and actually, it might be Kafiat to make it three wide here with them. Yes, he does, and he goes down the inside of, uh, of the Red Bull car, so the Toro Rosso trying to make the move on the big brother team, and it looks like he may just pull it off. No, not quite. I think Ricardo will keep that, but for sure, Ricardo Ricardo very much flustered at the start of this race and just going backwards so far for the opening two laps there. But we now move on to lap number four at the end of it. As we move on to lap five, this will be by the time we uh, come across the line. We're now catching signs finally, sparking away there. You can see on the replay camera, we've got DRS wide open. We were in rich mix initially, down to lean mixture as we go down the inside into turn one. We're in, we're in lean to try and get the traction here. We leave signs the room on the inside, but then we just about hang it around the outside. We do get the traction down, lean mixture helping us through those corners because that that, that that sequence of corners always for me against the AI in this game has always been a tricky one from season one and throughout qualifying I felt that's where I was losing some time so trying to kind of negotiate the traction a little bit with the lead mixture we then move on to lap seven you can see I'm up into P9 
as the front runners start to make their first few pit stops. And the same for my teammate Nico Hulkenberg, who is now being chased down by one Roman Grosjean, who's making really good progress in this race, although both of them have been jumped by Riccardi. You can see the Red Bull just in the distance as they go down the main straight now. Grosjean with DRS on the inside. You can see Science just coming out of the pits here, so this is going to be very, very tight stuff as Grosjean and Hulkenberg will try and go around the outside of uh, Science and do actually navigate that successfully, although Hulkenberg does look like, look like he has to let off a little bit, and Science may have a better run now. So straight away, Science diving into the action with a move down the inside of the German, our teammate in the other Renault car. They go side by side as they go towards the end of Sector 1. Science trying his best to shove Nico a little bit off circuit there, and Science will actually get that move done. So nice, very, very nice overtake for our former teammate. And then as we move on to a bit of a different fight here, this is actually the top guys. Obviously the two Mercedes guys, Bottas going for a move down the inside of Stroll, who is on a set of soft tyres since the beginning of this Grand Prix. So just like m m myself, Stroll's going a lot longer in this race, although obviously I'm going a lot longer. And uh, speaking about that, Stroll does come eventually into the pits, so and now this will open up Hamilton to maybe slipstream his teammate down into turn one. you got Kimi Räikkönen and Alton lurking about. Sebastian Vettel nowhere to be seen, unfortunately, but they go side by side. The two Silver Arrows through the first few turns, so will Kimi maybe just sit back and watch this kind of blow up maybe as they make a little bit of contact there through turn three. You can see that's actually me, the flash in yellow in the Renault car, and they go three wide, actually. Look at that. Räikkönen goes down the inside of both Mercs, and they're three wide. The race leaders, effectively, are battling out there. Look at this absolutely awesome stuff there into the S section. It's going to be Hamilton, I think, that just tries to nick it. No, Bottas, brilliant stuff to go around the outside, then nips it down the inside, and he's got it, and he's back into what will be a net first play, because the only car ahead of them is myself, and as we move on to our POV on to lap 10, it's almost inevitable that they'll be overtaking us, because we're in lean mix Chanel, because I know Bottas is going to catch me. There's no, point up, uh, there's no point putting up too much of a fight, so just time to save the fuel, really, on lap 11. I'm probably going to be pitting in a lap or two, so, yeah, I just go, I take it very nice and easily into turn one, lift off a little bit, lift and coast, short shift to tad on the exit and just try and save some fuel as I can. As I mentioned, we're going to the soft tyres and then a set of super soft. So, so at the moment, just trying to save as much fuel as we can so that we have more to go on on rich mix at the end of this race. If we have about 1.5 uh, laps worth of rich mix that's going to be a lot because the Renault engine from we know from last season is very very decent once we go up into rich mix and you can see as I let these two uh, pass me they go absolutely have a, a ding dong and a half as they both clash wheels through turn two and three Kimi trying his best to kind of attack the Mercs but you know all through qualifying it looks like it was it's, it's been a very comfortable weekend for the Mercedes guys and Kimi's trying but I think in the end yeah it'll be Hamilton to stay ahead I think it may be a comfortable one too for Mercedes really but by the end of this race, but you can see there we signal to Jeff, our engineer, to box this lap as I lock up again into the hairpin. So these medium tires are starting to feel very much uh, second hand stuff. And you can see I'm constantly just in lean mix out because at the moment, no need to really push too much as Danka Fiat now is out of the race. Van Dorn out of the race. Okay, so has it been a oh, strolled out of the race as well. So there's definitely been some sort of crash then. So is there no safety car? I'm surprised, really. Three cars out of this race now. We're down to 16 runners only which is uh, quite a small number now in this race. And I'm very surprised there would there was no safety car or even a virtual safety car. So uh, that was a bit annoying because if there was a safety car then, that would have been absolutely perfect for me because obviously I'm coming to the pits anyway. So it would have been effectively a free pit stop that I was planning to make anyway. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate there. The one time I want the FIA to be overly cautious perhaps and uh, call a safety car out. Uh, for whatever incident that was. We will take a look at the replay of that, but we're just going to, uh, first of all, follow on. As we come out of the pits, you can see the two Haas uh, cars just ahead of one of the Force Indias of Esteban Ocon, I think that is, because uh, Sergio Perez is way up the order, I think. And as we come out of the pits, Sainz, annoyingly, is just able to get ahead of us there, locking up a tan into turn one. Meant that Sainz did get it around the outside, although we're not going to give up. We're straight into Rich Mix now to re-overtake him there. So straight away, just like Sainz did on our teammate, we're going to get straight into the action here as we go wheel to wheel there. Very, very close stuff as we go sidewall to sidewall on the tie on the front tyres. Uh, the hand of anger goes up. It is, uh, I think there was a tiny bit of contact there, but we do manage to get ahead of Sainz. And you can see there's a Red Bull of Max Verstappen behind the Toro Rosso there. So hopefully uh, putting Sainz between us two will delay that inevitable overtake by Verstappen. But now finally, here we go. We're going to look at a replay now of uh, the Russian overtaking uh, Stoffel van Dorn down the inside of the final corner. So is there a bit of contact here? No. So they go side by side. So it's all fine and dandy at the moment between the McLaren and the Toro Rosso. Now, oh no, uh, Van Dorn squeezes. Oh my God, there's been contact into the pit wall and it, it's uh, the Toro Rosso and McLaren down and then strolled taken out by the Force India, I think that was. Let's look at on, on board what was going on here. I, I, 
get a feeling that, unfortunately, I think this may be a bit unfortunate. AI, um, yeah, oh, um, yeah, I think what's happened there is Van Dorn is trying to come into the pit lane, and obviously Kefiat is not doing that, and oh my god, that is so dangerous. That could have been, that could have been so much worse for Kefiat, and thankfully for Grosjean, he just misses everything, and we can take a very nice look from his T-Wing there at what happened. Then Stroll, now, oh, it hits the back end of Kefiat and then gets taken out by the Force India there. Gets absolutely no-scoped by the Force India on his front right tyre. But that is a shocking scene, really, from Kefiat's on board. That is, a, that is a very dangerous crash, to be honest. That's kind of race ban worthy. If there were race bans allowed in the F1 game, I think that would be a race ban for Van Dorn, as he completely literally just squeezed Kefiat into the wall, pretty much. Um, yeah, wow. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a crash and a half. Probably the biggest crash I've seen so far on the F1 uh, career mode game, to be honest. And meanwhile, you've seen Verstappen overtake Sainz, and now Hulkenberg having a pop down the inside of the Toro Rosso. Not going to work out so far, so the German's going to have to be a little bit patient and maybe just wait for the next round on the pit straight. And yes, he will, as we move on now to the very next lap. With DRS wide open, you can see how much pace Verstappen has got now compared to these two getting away and starting to chase down me. You can see we just went off screen there into turn one. Here goes Hulkenberg down the inside to overtake the Toro so finally so it's been a, a kind of interlocking battle pretty much between Sainz and both of us Renault cars this entire race uh, so far in this middle stint as we move on now onto our POV onto lap 16 as we cross the line we're in P10 at the moment still being chased down but you can see on the top left Verstappen is going to come into the pits that looks like as well as Nico Hulkenberg there but we continue on for two more laps onto lap 18 still going as long as we can we're trying to stretch this to about lap 21 to be honest uh, to try and go onto the set of super softs because the super softs can only really last about seven laps before they really start wearing out so that's how we're going how long we're going and so we're still going on on these soft tires you can see now Vettel trying his best to overtake me he actually couldn't get me in a straight line which I was very surprised about really I thought the Ferrari would have uh, absolutely had us on toast there down the main straight but clearly not but into turn one a little bit of contact made there as Vettel kind of barges uh, his way through and is able to overtake me and then eventually then it's going to be Dan Ricciardo now we uh, once again kind of see him for the first time really in this race we've seen his teammate plenty of times in the middle stint but here goes Ricciardo around the outside as Kimi just comes out of the pits and Ricardo is down the inside but actually we do a bit of a switchback move to him as he goes a little bit wayward into turn two uh, tightens up the corner for himself so we re-overtake the Australian and uh, I mean it's there's not really much point to us fighting but yeah I haven't had too many uh, too many fights really so far in this race it's been a bit of a kind of getting my head down and just driving driving my race really the delta time uh, so far on this second stint so I thought I'd have a bit of fun and re-overtake Ricardo even though I don't you know didn't really need to there's no real point fighting that and anyway into the hairpin I lock up actually and Ricardo able to send it down the inside on the medium tyres even on uh, the harder set of tyres the Red Bull car has the advantage and we're back down to P6 and uh, we will be coming to pits anyway. You can see in the bottom right there, my engineer has said the pit window is open. And then we move swiftly, quickly on to the end of that lap. And we are in. So we're onto a set of uh, red wall super soft tyres. This will be now to the end of the race. We've got, I think, just over a lap of fuel, even a lap and a half of fuel to burn on Rich Mix. So just like I said, that's why we saved a lot of fuel. Because now we're you know, as light as we are for the entire race. And we've got a lot of fuel to burn. So hopefully we'll come out in a sensible kind of position and we can push on to maybe just get some final points. I don't know. It's going to be a very tricky one. Once again, it looks like just like season one, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a hard afternoon and a bit of a bit of uh, pill to swallow, really, in terms of the pace we've got around Bahrain. Definitely is a bit of a bogey circuit for me. But saying that, I mean, Hulkenberg's also not in the points. So as we move on to lap 22, we did come out ahead of Massa, but on the very same lap on colder tyres, he's on warmer tyres, albeit on, on slower tyres on the soft tyres. Massa is able to overtake us in a straight line with DRS there on the back straight in the heart of Sector 2. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to try and re-overtake the Williams if we can. So we're up into rich mix now. We were in standard on the outlap now, but now we're going to get the slipstream already sparking away once again, which kind of suggests to me that perhaps I've maybe lowered this Renault a bit too low. I think I've seen way too many times that our car is sparking down these main straights as we kind of get up to the peak 7th and 8th gear, which kind of suggests maybe I put the ride height a little bit too low which may be affecting things a tad and uh, making us bottom out. As we close up to Massa and have a little look, but you can see we don't make the move. Behind us there, you can see Hulkenberg did make the move, but saying that, Massa's now tightened up the corner for himself. He's actually cut the corner on turn two, and we tried to make the move, but he actually widens up his car, gets the elbow out, and forces us wide on the curving, but now we've got the slipstream down the inside. Now, 
now into the end of sector one trying to get this will be very very close we have a bit of a tank slapper there we've tapped ties but we've just about kept it side by side into the s section with massa have the grip to do it we're gonna break a little bit early do a bit of a switch back move on him to get to the outside of the hairpin now so a bit of an unorthodox place to try and make the move on an f1 car but we'll try our best and can we get the traction down in rich mix we got it still side by side so he'll have the outside line we break early and massa actually gets sent off wide there he's, he's, he's tried to give us the room so fair play to him but he's also unable to keep it on the circuit there and so we open DRS eventually and we do get that move and you can see behind Hulkenberg that we saw did try to make the move down the inside of Science has made it so both of us Renaults making a move on that lap but now as we move on later into the race you can see Science is going to come back at Nico so these two really glued together on circuit there so uh, our former teammate and our current teammate uh, going uh, going to war and Hulkenberg lets off the throttle there into turn two crucially and unfortunately has to let Science through and I think that's going to be how it ends for those two as I think Science is going to move on to have a bit better pace at the end of this race. Meanwhile for us the battle's not over as into the last lap of the Grand Prix Massa goes down the inside you can see how worn our tyres are he's still on the right hand side so we give him the room we let off the throttle a little bit to leave enough space on the outside of turn two so we go side by side as we go towards the end of sector one he's got the inside line but I'm going to break a little bit earlier now and we're going to practice our race craft a little bit as we straight up the car a lot faster than Massa can get the traction down and that's a textbook switchback move there on Felipe Massa to re overtake him and it won't be for any points though it'll just be for a bit of glory and a bit of kind of saving face here but it has been a very very difficult afternoon but that was Valtteri Bottas you saw who's going to win the Bahrain Grand Prix I think it's going to be a one two for Mercedes so like I mentioned earlier they've looked like they've been literally kings of this circuit and have uh, been dominating Ferrari all race long we come across the line for a pretty I would say disappointing P11 really because I, I really wanted to try and get points and improve on the performance we had here last season but it just looks like it really is just a bit of a bogey circuit for me but saying that as I said earlier Hulkenberg also hasn't got points and last season in the Toro Rosso I didn't get points and Sainz didn't get points so I don't know it just appears whatever team I go in uh, at Bahrain we both just don't perform very well I'm not too sure obviously I don't my setup work doesn't affect Nico's car so yeah, it's um, a bit of a frustrating one, really. I, I, I can't say I'm enjoying coming to Bahrain so far in the F1 2017 game. But there you go. It is a 1-2 for Mercedes there with Raikkonen in the third place. And once again, Vettel kind of nowhere in this race so far. But uh, it's a good one for the Finn today, who uh, obviously made a brilliant overtake around the outside of Hamilton to get back into the lead of this race. And uh, unfortunately for us, Force India and Red Bull both will score some decent points. And I mentioned at the end of the last episode of the Chinese Grand Prix how long we can maybe go for to stay ahead of Red Bull Racing. Well, it's been a good race for Ricardo. Initially, after struggling and being down to P12 at one stage, he's gone and got fifth. And uh, Verstappen overtakes us in the championship there. We're below him. Hamilton goes up the rankings into P4. And Ricardo, still though, only in P10 there. We're actually still ahead of him. But you can see in the constructors now, Red Bull have already overtaken us. So... Yeah, that lasted a bit long. I mean, we're still both, we're still in the 30s region with Red Bull. So I think if we have a good enough race next time out at the Russian Grand Prix, we could kind of re-overtake Red Bull, maybe. I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. But for now, we're back down to P4. And that's maybe where minimum, I feel like, as a team, we need to be. Because obviously, I, I was able to get P4 in the Toro Rosso last season. So you think with uh, the caliber of Nico Hulkenberg and also how good the car has performed in the first two rounds, at least, uh, you would hope that we can get P4 at least. But I, I really do want to try and maybe rustle the feathers of Red Bull if we can at some certain circuits where the car maybe works a little bit better but just taking a look at the wear uh, not too bad actually just so like I've said um, the first two columns pretty equal actually so I'm gonna act that's actually gonna be a head scratcher maybe on what column I pick for running as a practice engine for the Russian Grand Prix and what I choose to run in quali and the race. So although it's going to be good for our engine wear, it is going to get, give me a bit of a headache as what component column I go with. But either way, it's still been a fun Grand Prix, so smash the like button if you have enjoyed it, guys. i got to say, the support has been absolutely awesome in the first two episodes of this second season, guys, so thank you guys so much for that. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly forum content. As always, let me know what you thought of this episode. It was a bit of a blip in the system. Hopefully, Renault as a team will be back and uh, scoring some good points at the Russian Grand Prix next time out. I'll see you guys then. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.